Okay, a blast from the past. Who remembers this setup? The Gen Gen A. Another apparent OU device. Um, so I've just whipped up a quick coil. I'm not using the uh, Tesla by filler pancake coil because um, I really don't think there's any difference between the standard one and that one. So we're just using a standard one and uh, first thing we're going to do is just um, get some scope shots with our scope here of the waveforms um, across the output coil as I never had my digital oscilloscope before so uh, we can have a decent look at it, get frequencies and all sorts of things so um, this is still the um, actual induction cooker top that I bought for um, the project a couple of years ago and um, it's had very little use, been sitting in the cupboard collecting dust because uh, it's actually cheaper for us to cook with gas than it is with electricity of course so um, anyway, got a couple of little probes sticking out of our coil there we're going to chuck the scope over it, have a look <coughs> then uh, we'll do some uh, calorimetric tests with a pot of water on there without a load hooked to this coil and then again with a load hooked to the coil and see if we can see any difference on our watt meter so we'll be back shortly okay so we've got um, a pot of cold water on top of our coil that's under there and that goes over here we have our scope hooked across it and there we have a thousand watts of light bulbs 500 each which means absolutely deadly squat unless there's 240 volts across them if we can get 240 volts across our light globes then we will be consuming a thousand watts or dissipating a thousand watts through the globe um, our watt meter drawing 1.4 watts on standby so um, all we're going to do now is switch it on we'll go with uh, 5 um, any lower than that and the power cycles so uh, we'll drop it down to 4, 3, 2 or 1 and it just goes on and off, on and off but uh, on 5 there's a lower setting where it remains on so um, consuming at the moment 986 watts thereabouts up and down a bit there is a waveform across our coil now it's only 26.6 uh, odd kilohertz 27 26.7 I actually thought it was higher than that for some reason but um, it's quite low uh, 40 volts RMS 125 126 peak to peak so um, coil obviously needs um, twice the amount of turns and uh, that would give us somewhere around 240 volts so uh, well, the RMS voltage is only 44 so we'll probably need a lot more turns anyway let's hook up our uh, light bulbs once again our voltage is 977 thereabouts up and down a few watts here and there Power factor of 96, now that power factor thing has got me a bit baffled because um, the incandescent bulb reads 0, 1 and um, the transformer is around 19 and this reads around 96. So um, who knows? Anyway, let's hook some globes up. So there we go definitely not a thousand watts being dissipated across them uh, RMS voltage pretty much the same 136 volts peak to peak 138, 140 uh, 988 so while watching that I'll just disconnect the light bulbs there you go 74, 76, 77, put them back up. So around uh, 
18 to 20 watt we see when we plug the uh, globes on now they're probably dissipating more than that but I would also imagine we now have this um, power if you want to call it that to uh, heat the water so there'll be um, less of the magnetic field getting to the pot there's some that's being used to convert um, our uh, power going to our lights through the coil so um, we definitely see a reflection when we hook the lights on through our watt meter and um, don't see much change in voltage across the coil loaded or unloaded but of course the machine will be compensating uh, once we put a load on it so um, I'm just wondering how this would go rectified and into a uh, HHO cell which is exactly what we're going to do next ok another pot for cold water um, the only problem with this you have to keep changing the water keeps on cooking it maybe we're not drawing enough power from our coil Anyway, uh, we just got a single tube cell in there, full way bridge rectifier. I'm going to fire it up and uh, see how our hydrogen production goes. Start on a low five. Just our time scale here. And now you're seeing the rectified AC with the. Uh, we have to go out a bit further. And a uh, not very exciting signal that one. So rectified AC going into the cell with uh, lots of little pulses, you know, 36 kilohertz pulses through each AC wave. Um, so I guess we'll just hook up the uh, power to the uh, cell and see what happens. no problem with producing copious amounts of hydrogen and oxygen certainly sorted our uh, waveform out a bit oh and there you go bit too much uh, power for the old um, rectifiers completely exploded there you go Tin Man's first explosion for a couple of years so um, blew that completely in half I can actually have a look inside a rectifier now so um mm. so yeah, good for six amps didn't quite catch what the uh, voltage was across those but um, had about uh, was it 44 volts RMS before rectified at 6 amps so 280 around 300 watts maybe was going into that cell which was why it was producing a lot of gas so my clip leads aren't actually hot well that one's a bit warm now be a really good time to have a look see what happens when we put AC across our cell apparently we get no production but I wonder if that's the case when you have a high frequency alright so let's have a look at that uh, here we go Well, it's not liking that because that's uh, more or less just shorting out our primary coil which um, is basically telling the machine do not start because we disconnect it okay still not so that can only mean that those other diodes also shorted out We 
will now remove from the system the insulated screwdriver just in case it's nasty going through there but it won't be because it's off. Hopefully now it will go or maybe we've um, just uh, trashed our machine. Oh, no, no problem there. So all those diodes are now completely ratchet. Um, about 300 watts was going into that cell. And uh, you did see it make copious amounts of gas, but unfortunately the uh, like rectifier wasn't able to cope. Um, that is just normal tap water. There's no electrolyte in it, but as you can see the tube cell is very close. There's only about 2 mil gap between the two, so the resistance still would have been fairly low. And our poor old diodes couldn't hack the paste. Turn that back off. So, um, there you go. One cactus, well, all, all diodes now I'm going to have to throw out because there's definitely a short across them now. Anyway, uh, a quick glimpse of gas production using the old Din Dine setup. And uh, we'll have to go and see if we can find a much more heavy duty rectifier or um, make up a plate so we'll put a bit more of a gap in there. But we'll be back to have another look at that. See what uh, high frequency um, does. Actually I might just um, get rid of those diodes now that we know they're shorted and um, we'll plug it straight on the AC see what happens. We'll be back shortly. Okay so we're ready for our uh, AC demo. We're going to see what happens. Just a bit of an experiment. Uh, let's uh, turn our machine down to five. We're growing some five about 985 or 980 to 990 watts and here is our lovely little waveform here we'll see, I don't know why it's not on the yes, SOD there we go, sampling, average I'll average that out so it's a little more stable Yay. Okay, so between 985 and 990 watts, I'm going to turn this off on number 5 to hook this up. You will see that I've stuck a thermometer in there as well. We're about uh, 23 degrees. So let's um, kick it back in the gut. Okay, it's now going. Let's definitely drop the voltage down there a bit. Now, the interesting part is we're now using 853, 851, and I can actually see the streams of heat <coughs> coming through that cell. hard to see with the camera no doubt but um, it's definitely there the water is getting quite hot quite fast it's now up to about 28 degrees and climbing so we're making hot water <coughs> take note of the power factor there is 95 we're going to stop this again and disconnect our cell like so. I just want to check the power factor without that coil hooked up. And it's 96. So still pretty close. Being the same. Like I said we've got 993. So it's around 990 watts. Without that uh, cell hooked up. And with it hooked up. Power factor is 95 and we're using 
150 and 860 watts. Well, we've dropped 130 watts. For some reason, um, I'm hooking that up and that is um, definitely pumping out the hot water. It's actually good having that multimeter behind there. As you can probably see the distortions from the heat coming off of the uh, cell. Okay, so by hooking our cell up, making hot water, we've dumped the um, wattage down by about 130, which is very interesting. So now I have to assume that, um, well, I don't know why, I would have dropped it down. Maybe there's not as much going into our hot water, so. What we're going to have to do next, this is actually something worth looking into, I think. Um, so I've never actually done any experimenting with putting AC through a um, tube cell like this. It will be acting like some sort of capacitor. So we may have some sort of tank circuit going on here. Definitely drop the voltage down across the coil. Um, 17.8. Got uh, 32 volts RMS, 100 volts peak to peak. So I'm just going to disconnect that and have a look at that again. Now I know there's a lot of current going through there because my um, uh, clip lead's awfully warm now. I no doubt my scope. Yes, we've just ended one of our probes. It's now too hot as well. Oh well, we might as well keep it on the job now that's bugging. Um, Okay, back to five. Uh, let's jump it up and down, about 48, 50 volts RMS, 154 peak to peak. 999, 98 watts. So, um, yeah, by hooking up our cell, we dropped the power consumption down according to the watt meter and the power factor is staying pretty much the same so even if the watt meter is reading wrong it will be reading wrong in both cases by the same amount due to the power factor value so um, it's definitely dropping the power down instead of um, raising the power consumption which is interesting so <clears throat> I guess what we've got to do now is I'm going to have to build a second coil um, and put it inside the pot maybe and put a slight load on it and see when we load see if we load this coil and if um, we lose some on the next coil so I can try it in between the pot and the primary coil to start with and then if we see no difference we'll stick it in the pot um, now I guess we'll also have to do some um, telemetric tests as well with a litre of water see how long it heats it takes it to heat and power requirement um, without the cell connected and then we'll connect the cell and do that same test again with a new batch of water good fun um, I'll leave all that for the next video, we're going to look a little further into this because um, we're actually heating two lots of water at once while dropping down the um, power consumption of the unit so we just need to know if um, we're losing anything in our heating process here when we, need, when we hook this um, cell up to our coil under the pot interesting stuff so I'll uh, see you as next video guys and um, we'll be looking at this a little more.